When watching other Unity and C-Sharp tutorials, I noticed that some people often use link statements, and they were quite mysterious to me. When I was learning how to use them, many game developers also said that link is garbage when it comes to performance. Literally, it generates bytes of garbage. First, let's take a look at how we can use link, and then discuss in which scenarios you should use it and when to avoid it. The link library is integrated in C-Sharp, so to use it it's really simple, just open your C-Sharp project and add using system.link. If you are unsure about what link is, it is a library that has tons of functions that are related to collections, such as lists, so with link you can easily order the lists, you can find some elements inside of them and do much more. Let's say that we have a list of players that is holding some user data, where each user can have name, score and so on, and we want to sort the list based on the score of the users. Without link, the code for comparing the scores would be quite long, because you would need to check if the user before has slower or greater score, and then just insert the player somewhere into the list, but what we can do with link is just to create a new list of the user data, which will be containing the users sorted by score, and then when we use the players list, which we want to sort based on the score, we see that when we edit using system.link, we can see bunch more use functions that we can use with the list. So in this case, we can either use order by, which will go from the lowest to the highest, or order by descending, which I will use in this case. When using pretty much all of the link statements, you will be creating some anonymous functions. This means that instead of creating function as usual, we'll actually create it just inside of the parameters. When defining an anonymous function, we first need to input some parameters. So in this case, the parameter is always the type that you have in the list. So in my case, it will be user data, and I can just give it some name, so maybe user. So the anonymous function has one parameter, which is the user, and we don't need to specify the type here. And after the arrow, we can specify what should happen. When I hover my mouse over the function, we can see that it needs some kind of key selector, which is just based on which number we should sort the users. So in this case, we can do just user, which is the parameter, dot, and then sort it by score. Most of the link statements don't return a list, so what we have to do is just to say dot to list. I have added some users into the players list and their scores, so in this case it's not sorted, and when we take a look into the sorted list, Yep, we can see that it is all sorted correctly based on the score. Let's say that we want to get the best player out of all of these, so we obviously don't need to convert it to a list, and after sorting it, we can just use the first or default, which is another link function. And this one doesn't require any of the crazy parameters, it's just going to get either the first out of the list or default, so that when it is null, it's not going to give us an error. So let's take a look at the best player, and yep, we can set it as Nico with 70 score, which is the highest out of all of them. But what if we don't want to store only the best player, and we also don't want to have all of them? So let's say that we want to have only the top 3. In this case, before converting it to a list, we can use the function take, which will just take given amount of items from the start of the list. So in this case, we can take 3, and then convert it to the list. And yep, we can see that we have those best 3 players and their scores. We may also want to run some code for each of the users, so in this case I will just display the order that the player has, and then the name and the score. In this case, we can use the function for each on the top 3 players list, again we'll need to specify the parameter, which will be the user. You can notice that in the function order by descending, we are using just pretty much one line of code, but this time, I'm also using player position integer, which I want to increase for each of the users. So this time, one line of code would not be enough, so we can just write the query brackets and continue as with normal function. So parameter is the user, and for each of the users, it's going to debug.log the position, so it is starting on one, then the username, the user score, and after it goes through one of the users, it will just increase the position, so the next player will have the position of two. And as we play the game, we can see that it successfully ran some code for each of the users. You may also want to display the total score of all of the users combined, so for this we could use the sum function, which is very simple, we can then again just input the user and say that we want to sum up all of these scores. That's it, very simple. And here we can see that the total score is 265. I've got another example which is using some items, so let's say that we have an inventory with some items, 
and we are trying to find out if the user can craft a certain item or not. For this, we would have to loop through all of the items, check if we have it there, or we can again use link. So we'll be looking for the found items inside of the items list, and we can use the where function, which is pretty much like a nip. We are checking if the item is matching a condition, if not, we'll just remove it from the list. So in this case, the parameter will again be item, and then we want to make sure that let's say the item name is equal to gold. And then as always, we need to convert it into a list, and then I'm just running through all of the items we have found and displaying it in the console. I have added a bunch of items into the list, and what it should find is just wood and gold, which we can see that it indeed found. Something more advanced would be grouping the items based on the rarity. So into the item class, I have added a rarity, which can be common, rare, epic, and legendary. And I just want to group the items into these groups, and then also sort the groups so that they are going from the common to rare, epic, and legendary. So I'm creating a var for the grouped items. The type of this one should be I enumerable, and this crazy thing that you can see down here. I'm just using the group by function which needs to know by which it should group it. So again, the input type is the item and we are grouping them by the rarity. But then what may happen is that the rarities would not be sorted. So it may go from legendary to common to rare to epic. So I'm then also ordering the groups. And then I'm using those classic for each loops to go through all of the groups and just display the items based on the group in which they are. I've also set the rarities of these items and we can see at first is displaying the gold, which is legendary then the silver which is epic, the iron which is rare, and also another rare item, and then just those two last common items. There are 10 more functions that are included inside of the link library, but now let's take a look at the performance. On the internet there is a great article written by Jackson Dunstan titled Just how much garbage does link create? And if we scroll down, we can find really great list of all of the link functions, and we can see how much garbage they all allocate, so some of them generate 300, some of them zero, it really depends, but most of them really generate some garbage. Just to verify the garbage collection, I will be running all of this code in update. Down here I open the profiler, and as we stop the game we can take a look at it, so just select some keyframe, and down here we should see all of the GC allocation, which right now is 8.8 .8 kilobytes for the player loop, so we can just dig deeper to see what's actually causing it, so again, go deeper and deeper until we find something. So here we have link examples update, which is the script in which it is running. You can go even deeper. A bunch of the allocation is actually coming from log string to console, which is just the debug.log. But we can see that the GC alloc, which is actually for the link, is allocating 3.3 kilobytes. This may not seem like a lot, but if it is happening 60 times per second, because we are running it on update and we would play let's say for 20 minutes then we can see that it should give us 237,000 of kilobytes of garbage which is quite a lot and this is obviously just one function so if you would be calling multiple of them on update it could really be a disaster I'm not saying that link is bad you just definitely should not be using it on update because it can really generate quite a lot of garbage over time but using it just on initialization on start or maybe every couple of seconds, really there should be no problem with it. Anyways, if you are building your game for computer, it may still not affect the user as much, but if you are building a game for mobile, then you definitely should avoid it. Link is still a great library that will help you to write code a lot faster and make it more readable. If you are looking for some game developer friends or just seeking some help, then feel free to take a look at our Discord server. If you are looking to support me financially, you can also take a look at my Patreon. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments, forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.